Hello, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and in this video I'd like to show you around the movie capabilities of the Canon EOS 5D Mark IV. Now the Mark IV is the fourth generation of Canon's enormously popular full-frame DSLR series, and since the Mark II it's been pioneering the use of video on DSLRs. So it's not surprising to see Canon raise its game with the Mark IV and finally include 4K video. So to celebrate, this video, including this segment, is all filmed in 4K. So if you have a 4K monitor, play it full screen, revel in the detail, and tell me what you think. Oh, and in case you're wondering, this segment and the next one, where I actually show you the Mark IV, were filmed on the Sony A6300, which is another great choice if you're into filming 4K video. Now I'm going to be showing you a lot of clips from the 5D Mark IV, again in 4K. They're going to be slightly wider than this, they're in the cinema 4K format. I'll also be comparing it against the 1080p footage from the camera, so you'll be able to see them side by side. And as always, if you want to find out everything else about the camera, please head on over to my full review at cameralabs.com. There I'll go into a huge amount of detail, again about the movie capabilities, but also the autofocus, the still image quality, the Wi-Fi that's now on the camera, the built-in GPS, absolutely everything you need to know about the camera is over there. So after watching this video, please check it out at cameralabs.com. But now, without further ado, let's get on with the Mark IV. So here's the EOS 5D Mark IV, and externally it looks a lot like its predecessor, so owners of the Mark III will feel right at home. It does however feature better weather sealing, now equivalent to the 7D Mark II, and a number of small tweaks I'll briefly mention now. Open the flaps on the side of the body and you'll notice the USB port has now become a version 3 faster. Sadly there's no 4K output from the HDMI port though, only 1080p, but at least there's still microphone and headphone jacks. Round the back you'll find a large 3.2 inch screen and a familiar control in the upper right corner which switches between live view and movies. So far so similar to the 5D Mark III, but in a very welcome upgrade the Mark IV screen is now touch sensitive, which coupled with the dual pixel CMOS AF sensor allows you to smoothly pull focus with a simple tap. Having confident continuous autofocus for movies absolutely transforms the experience over the Mark III, which lest we forget was manual focus only for video. You can also use the touchscreen to make exposure adjustments as you film, like changing the aperture. To the lower right of the movie live view collar is the AF joystick, and below this is a new push button control. This is actually a redesigned version of what you'd find on the 7D Mark II, and it's designed to cycle between the different AF area options, a bit like the M function button on the top did, although you can configure this new button to change the settings without first pressing the area button in the top right corner. As before, the Mark IV is equipped with twin memory card slots, one for SD and the other for compact flash, although sadly the former will only exploit the speeds of UHS-1 cards. Unfortunately, the Mark IV can't exploit the fastest SD cards on the market, which in turn means you'll almost certainly need to use compact flash cards for recording more than a few seconds of 4K video at a time. And this leads me neatly to the movie features of the camera. Ok, the first thing I want to talk about is coverage, so I'm starting with a clip filmed in 1080p with the EF 24-70mm f4 at 24mm. Now when filming 1080p, the 5D Mark IV uses the full sensor width and scales it down. When shooting 4K video though, the 5D Mark IV takes a 1 to 1 crop from the middle of the sensor. Now this is great for avoiding scaling artifacts, but thanks to the very high resolution sensor to start with, you're looking at quite a significant reduction in the field of view. How much? Check this out. So here's a clip from the same position with the same lens, still set to 24mm, but now the camera's filming in 4K. Horizontally, you're looking at a 1.64 times field reduction, which is actually more than filming with an APS-C body. This is a big problem for the 5D Mark IV, as it means you'll need a very short focal length lens if you want wide angle coverage in 4K. I should also add that you'll need some big memory cards too, with the 5D Mark IV burning through about 4 gigabytes per minute for 4K, thanks to its 500 megabit motion JPEG compression. So how does the quality compare between 1080p and 4K on the 5D Mark IV? To find out, I filmed an outdoor scene in both modes, adjusting a zoom lens to deliver the same field of view. 
You'll see them side by side here with 1080p on the left and 4K on the right and it's pretty clear to see the 4K version resolves much finer detail while also avoiding some moiré and false colour artefacts of the 1080p version. But again you have that tighter field of view crop to deal with and also that high bitrate too. One of the best things about the 5D Mark IV is the combination of a dual pixel CMOS sensor and a touch screen which lets you tap anywhere to smoothly refocus. To put it to the test, I'm doing it here with a 24-70mm f4 set to 50mm f4 in aperture priority. Notice how confident it is with little or no hunting. It really does focus on exactly what you want and stop dead when it finds it. It's also possible to adjust the speed of the refocusing. Here it is at its slowest setting of minus 7 and see how much slower the process is. Once again all I'm doing is simply tapping the screen to tell the camera where and when I'd like to refocus. You can also do this remotely using your phone to control the camera over Wi-Fi. And for completeness, here's the 5D Mark IV at its fastest movie refocusing speed of plus 2. Set the movie autofocus mode to tracking with face detection and the 5D Mark IV will also do a fair job of refocusing on someone walking towards the camera. I filmed this clip in fairly low light conditions with the EF 50mm f1.8 STM lens wide open at f1.8 in aperture priority mode and once the camera's identified me it does a pretty good job at keeping me sharp. The touchscreen also lets you make adjustments while you're filming. Here I used it on a 1080p clip to adjust the ISO sensitivity as I walked from the outside of a building to the inside of a cafe and back again. This involved going from 100 ISO for the outside up to 10,000 ISO for the inside and back again. Obviously tapping the screen while you're filming isn't ideal, you might see it, you might hear it and the increments are fairly visible too but at least you can make those adjustments. Note that the rear thumb wheel can't be used for silence adjustments on the 5D Mark IV like some earlier models. For smoother exposure adjustments I'd suggest using auto ISO while manually fixing the shutter and aperture. I've done that here on another 1080p clip and the ramping up and back down again of the sensitivity is much smoother than doing it by hand. Plus you don't run the risk of seeing or hearing the impact of constantly tapping the screen while filming. The 5D Mark IV also offers a time lapse movie mode which can be programmed to capture a bunch of images at set intervals before then encoding them into a video all in camera, albeit at a maximum quality of 1080p at 25p or 30p. Here I set the camera to take 500 images at 3 second intervals and I use the monochrome picture style. Here's another example of the time lapse movie mode, this time taking 500 pictures at 1 second intervals. I use the EF 85mm f1.8 lens here for a slightly compressed perspective. If you're happy filming in 1080p, the 5D Mark IV also offers an HDR movie mode which can retain detail in bright highlights or dim shadow areas. To demonstrate this, here's a view of the Brighton Pavilion on an overcast day. Now this is without the HDR mode enabled. And now here's the same view with the HDR mode enabled. The difference is fairly subtle but I reckon the sky is less blown out and there's a slight lift in the shadow areas. If you're into slow motion the fastest frame rate for 4K on the 5D Mark IV is just 30p and the fastest for 1080 is just 60p so this sadly rules out slow motion at these high resolutions. But if you're happy to drop the quality to 720p you can increase the frame rate to 100p for power regions or 120p for NTSC regions allowing a 4 to 5 time slowdown depending on your project settings. I filmed this clip at 100p so you're looking at a 4 time slowdown here. Note these frame rates match the Sony A7R Mark II but Panasonic's GH5 and Canon's own 1DX Mark II can support faster rates at higher resolutions. Just before moving on, a quick handheld clip filmed in 4K at 1600 ISO showing the continuous servo AF in action again. This was with the 24-70mm at 24mm f4 and with optical stabilisation enabled. Again notice how 4K on the 5D Mark IV is in the wider cinema 4K format as compared to 16x9 for the 1080p. The 5D Mark IV lets you film in 4K up to 12,800 ISO, so here's how those upper sensitivities look. First, here it is at 800 ISO. Next, at 1600 ISO. Now, here's 3200 ISO. 
next 6400 ISO and finally the top sensitivity for 4K anyway of 12800 ISO. Now since the 5D Mark IV uses approximately an APS-C area to capture its 4K video, you might understandably be wondering how the quality compares to actual cameras which feature APS-C sensors. I wondered about this too, so I filmed the same bunch of flowers moments later with the Fujifilm X-T2 and Sony A6300 both in 4K. Here's how they look at 800 ISO. Then at 1600 ISO. Now 3200 ISO, next 6400 ISO, and finally 12800 ISO. I reckon there's not a great deal between them, so if you're only interested in filming 4K video, you might not actually see much benefit of forking out for and lugging around a full frame DSLR. That said, the larger body of the 5D Mark IV is much better for managing heat than small mirrorless cameras and its battery could film 90 minutes worth of 4K in my tests. Right, that's the end of my video compilation, but don't forget there is absolutely loads more information about the movie mode and every other aspect of the 5D Mark IV in my full review at cameralabs.com. Please check it out if you want to find out more about the camera, and if you're interested in my own personal photography, I post almost everything on Instagram under the name Cameralabs. And remember, if there's anything that I do that you find useful, you can support my work by buying me a coffee. Cheers. See you next time.